started documenting this after the installation of the frost walls seen here, which are fully excavated inside. Next, we brought in fill in lifts, and here we're installing the sub slab plumbing. Since this build happened in winter, you can see frost blankets we brought in to protect the fill and plumbing overnight. We'll bring in more fill before we lay the concrete slab. Here you can see the 2x4s we used to locate the plumbing pipe and electrical conduit to make sure they're coming through the slab in the right position before we pour the concrete. Here you can see we filled the frost walls in the rest of the way and added an insulation barrier as well as a welded wire mesh which reinforces the slab in preparation for the concrete. Here's the newly poured slab and the concrete crew is waiting for it to set up a little bit more before they do a final troweling. Once the slab is set up, our crew comes in and measures the slab to make sure everything is level and then we measure and mark out all of the wall locations. Here the first batch of wall panels is arriving and being unloaded with the crane. They'll stage these on the garage foundation while they unload the rest of the truck with the boom forklift. All of the panel bundles are protected with this shrink wrap before they leave our shop, which is only removed immediately before the panels are lifted into place. Here we're getting ready to set the first wall. So the crew removes some of the packing protection from the bottom of the panel, then installs neoprene gasket on the underside. That will create the air seal on the bottom of the panel where it meets the slab. Having prepped the wall, the crew now moves the panel onto the slab, aligning it with the marks they made before. They'll move the panel into its final position, then secure it onto the slab with concrete screws through the bottom plate of what we call the service layer. Once it's secured and braced, we'll unhook the crane, then hook up the next wall panel. This is the gable end for the Xyla. We pre-install all of the windows and typically all of the doors, which you see here, again securing that gasket on the underside for the air seal. Now they're pre-installing screws in the corners that will secure the panels together once everything is in place and perfectly plumb. This panel here is separating the main volume from the master wing, so you can see that it's partially an interior wall panel with those exposed 9.5 inch deep studs. Double checking measurements there as they fly the panel into place, sliding it down over a pipe you can see visible on the left. The crew is actually standing in the master bedroom as they put that panel into place. We have specialized tools that we use for securing the panels together at the corners, making sure everything is level and straight. We call this particular tool the German Claw. It's been modified for use with the panels. Here comes another panel for the master bedroom wing, again installing that gasket on the underside of the wall panel before placing it on the slab. The crane operator is actually communicating with the crew using a headset, which is great because it means we don't have to have a dedicated in-between person providing hand signals to the crane. So Jason in the middle there is talking directly with the crane op, telling him exactly what to do to position the wall panel where he wants it. Setting it down on the slab, then securing it where it meets the other panels, making sure that it's plumb, and then securing the corners to make sure everything is rigid. So here's a quick look around from the outside of the site and a quick look from inside, moving from the master bedroom into the main volume, then looking over towards the connector in the garage. Moving into the connector, we can see the first upper wall connector panel has already been installed. Here comes a gable end upper panel for the main house. We call those top hats. We make these out of two by six framing and sheathing. It's not insulated because this house is being framed with roof trusses, and so the insulation will be at the ceiling level instead. Here's some framing that'll be used at the gable ends of the wall panels. Now they're installing the wall panels for the garage. These are also two by six wall framing and are fitted with a closed cell foam gasket on the underside where the panel meets the slab. Here you see the garage panel that has the garage door opening with braces on the bottom that'll be removed later. Now they're starting to fly the roof trusses, which will form the roof framing. This is the flat ceiling style of the Xyla. If it were the vaulted ceiling version, we'd be flying insulated roof panels instead. Now that the roof trusses are in place, they'll enclose them with zip sheathing. Once the roof trusses and sheathing are installed, we install this membrane on the underside of the roof trusses. The membrane forms an air barrier, which is crucial for the energy efficiency of the house. 
So we use an industrial double side tape to secure the membrane to the underside of the truss, tape the seam, and then install two bys on to help secure the membrane and also to create a surface where the interior wall partitions can be fastened.